When Indigenous footballer Adam Goods ended his AFL career, people were shocked. The racist abuse had eventually taken its toll. But Goose's case is not isolated because one in three people that are racialized are impacted by workplace racism. The complex history of race in dispossession, genocide, colonialism remain hidden beneath the surface, just like the iceberg. Society failure to confront race means that when racism is exposed, we put it in the too hard basket. According to Lenton, race is a technology of power for the management of human difference. Race ranks and categorizes people and assigns them value. It makes some people worthy of protection, while others are dehumanized and easily discarded. For people like Adam Goods, race naturalizes them and designates them as inferior. Race confines their capacity as human beings, therefore generating the environment upon which racism occur. Race is practiced systematically through the law, culture, economics, and politics. These practices are what produces the racist ideas and attitudes. But when we talk about Adam Good's case, race is not discussed. We focus on the individual attitude and ignore the racist systems that produces those behavior. Research mirrors the same pattern. Research in Australia on racism fails to explain where racism comes from or why persists, and daring lies the problem. This lack of analysis on race is what motivated my research to look at the gaps in our understanding of race, particularly in workplace racism. Two types of data is analyzed, scholarly research and organizational efforts to combat workplace racism. Why should we be concerned? Because racism has serious health impact. It is estimated to cost the Australian economy $38 billion a year. We need to stop wasting resources on the individual racist attitudes and behaviour. This makes my research critical to bridge the gaps in our understanding of race in developing the language to explain why racism persists because we can't solve a problem that we don't understand.